Okay, dear friends, let's continue. I'm Dr. Y. <laughs> For you, I'm Dr. Y. I'm Armen Astvatsatrian, professor from Yerevan, Armenia. And we talk about, we continue to talk about pneumonia. And today's topic is community acquired pneumonia. So, what is community acquired pneumonia? Community acquired pneumonia is defined as a pneumonia that is acquired at Saudi hospital. So, the name. So the most commonly is, uh, identified pathogens are Streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus or Haemophilus influenza, a typical bacteria uh, that is uh, Chlamydia pneumonia, Mycoplasma pneumonia, Legionella species, species, and viruses. Symptoms and signs are fever, cough, cough, yes, cough. Sputum production, pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea, tachypnea, and tachycardia. Diagnosis is based on clinical presentation and chest X-ray. So treatment is with empirically chosen antibiotics. Prognosis is excellent for relatively young or healthy patients. But many pneumonias, especially when caused by streptococcus pneumonia, legionella, staphylococcus aureus, or influenza virus, are serious or even fatal in older, sicker patients. About etiology, etiology of community-acquired pneumonia. Many organisms cause community-acquired pneumonia, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Pathogens vary by patient age and other factors. But the relative importance of each as a cause of community-acquired pneumonia is uncertain because most patients do not undergo thorough testing and because even with testing, specific agents are defined in less than half of cases, less than 50% of cases. So bacterial causes, the most common bacterial causes are Streptococcus pneumonia, as we said above, Haemophilus influenza, Streptococcus pneumonia, and Mycoplasma, Mycoplasma uh, Mycobacteria, uh, myco, Mycoplasma, Mycoplasma, myco, and, and Mycoplasma pneumonia. So pneumonia is caused by chlamydia and Mycoplasma are often clinically indistinguishable from other pneumonities from other pneumonias, sorry, for other pneumonias. Streptococcus pneumonia accounts for 2 to 5 percent of community acquired pneumonia and is uh, two, is the second of most common causes of lung infections in healthy people aged 5 to 35 years. Streptococcus pneumonia is commonly responsible for outbreaks of respiratory infection with, within families within families, in college, the dormitories, and in military training camps. It causes a relatively benign form of pneumonia that in infrequently requires infrequently re requires hospitalization. Chlamydia cytochi or uh, pneumonia, uh, cytokosis, cytokosis, is rare and occurs in patients who are own or are often exposed to psychotic uh, uh, birds, psychotic birds, that is parrots, parakeets, macaws, psychotic, yeah, psychotic birds, that is parrots, parakeets, and macaws. Since the year 2000, the incidence of community acquired methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, skin infections has increased markedly. This pathogen can rarely cause severe cavitating pneumonia and tends to affect young adults. Streptococcus pneumonia and Staphylococcus aureus skin infections, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus uh, skin infections, can cause necrotizing pneumonia. Pseudococcus originosa is an especially common cause of pneumonia in patients with cystic fibrosis. Neutropenia, advanced acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, immunodeficiency syndrome, and or bronchiectasis. Bronchiectasis. Another risk factor for Pseudococcus originosa. 
Of course, I'm sorry. Pseudomonas originosa, of course. <laughs> Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas originosa is hospitalization with receipt of intravenous antibiotics within the previous three months. Uh, of course, my friends, I, am do, I do sorry. Pseudomonas originosa. A host of other organisms causes lung infection is immunocompetent patients. Uh, Q fever, tularemia, anthrax, and plague are uncommon bacterial syn syndrome, syndromes in which pneumonia may be a prominent feature. Tularemia, anthrax, and plague should raise the suspicion of bioterrorism. Viral causes. Bacterial superinfection can make distinguishing viral from bacterial infection difficult. Common viral causes include coronaviruses, Respiratory syncytial virus, syncytial virus, adenoviruses, influenza viruses, metapneumonials, metapneumovirus, virus, parainfluenza viruses, adenoviruses, Epstein-Barr virus, and Coxav Coxav Coxavirus virus are commonly viruses that rarely cause pneumonia. Seasonal influenza can rarely cause a direct viral pneumonia, but often predispose to the development of a serious secondary bacterial pneumonia. Varicella virus <coughs> and uh, hantavirus cause lung infection as a part of adult chickenpox and hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. Other causes, common fungal uh, pathogens include histoplasma capsulatum, histoplasmosis, and coccidoides, im im imitis, coccid coccidomycosis. Less common fungal pathogens include blastomyces, dermatoidis, blastomycosis, and, and <coughs> paracoxidoid brasilians, paracoxidomycosis, pneumocytes, pneumocytes gyrovechi commonly causes pneumonia in patients who have human immunodeficiency virus infection or immunosuppressed. Parasites causing lung infection in developed countries include Toxocara canis and Catis toxo toxocariasis, Dirofliarium imits difloriasis, and Paragonimus west westermani, Paragonimiasis, pulmonary tuberculosis and non-tuberculosis mycobacterial infection are discussed. Will be discussed elsewhere, I suppose. So pneumonia in children, in children the most common causes of pneumonia depend on age. Less than five years, most often viruses among bacteria, Streptococcus pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, and Staphylococcus pyogenes are common. Uh, more than five years old, most often the bacteria Streptococcus pneumonia, Mycoplasma pneumonia, or Chlamydia pneumonia. So about symptoms and signs of community-acquired pneumonia. Symptoms include malaise, chills, rigor, fever, cough, dyspnea, and chest pain. Cough typically is productive in older children, in older children and adults, and dry in infants, young children, and older adults. Dyspnea usually is mild and exertional and is rarely present at rest. Chest pain is pleuritic, pleuritic, pleuritic and it's adjacent to the infected area. Pneumonia may manifest as upper abdominal pain when lower lobe infection in each in it initrates the diaphragm, irritates, irritates, irritates the diaphragm. Gastrointestinal symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea are also common. Symptoms become variable at the extremes of age. Infection in infants may manifest as nonspecific, ir ir irritability and uh, restlessness. In older patients, manifestation may be confusion and, up and obtundation. Signs include fever, tachypnea, tachycardia, crackles, bronchial breath sounds, agophony, E to A change state, to occur when during auscultation, a patient says the letter E and through, uh, through the stethoscope the examiner hears the letter A and dullness to percussion. Signs of plural effusion may also be present. Nasal, nasal flaring, use of accessory muscles and cyanosis are commonly among infants. 
Fever is frequently absent in older patients. Symptoms and signs were previously thought to differ by type of pathogen. For example, factors thought to suggest viral pneumonia included gradual onset, preceding symptoms of an upper respiratory infection, diffuse findings on auscultation and absence of a toxic appearance. Atypical pathogens were considered more likely when onset was less acute and more likely during known community outbreaks. However, manifestations in patients with typical and atypical pathogens overlap considerably. In addition, no single symptom or sign is sensitive or specific enough to predict the organism. Symptoms and signs are even similar for other non-effective inflammatory lung disease, such as hypersensitivity pneumonids and cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. About diagnosis of community-acquired pneumonia, so chest X-ray, consideration of alternative disorders, for example, heart failure, pulmonary embolism, sometimes in the identification of pathogen, evaluation of severity and restratification, diagnosis of pneumonia suspected on the basis of clinical presentation and infiltrate seen on chest X-ray. When there is a high clinical suspicion of pneumonia and the chest X-ray does, not reveal an infiltrate, doing computed tomography or repeating the chest X-ray in 24 hours to 40 hours, 48 hours is recommended. Severity of the pneumonia is estimated using a variety of clinical and laboratory factors, which are sometimes organized using quantitative scoring systems. Typically, testing includes oxygen saturation, complete blood count, and blood urea nitrogen level. Differential diagnosis in patients presenting with pneumonia-like symptoms include acute bronchitis and exacerbations of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which can be distinguished from pneumonia by the absence of infiltrates on a chest X-ray. Other disorders should be considered, particularly when findings are inconsistent, inconsistent or non-typical, such as heart failure, organizing pneumonia, the heart, don't forget about heart failure. Organizing pneumonia and hypersensitivity pneumonids. The most serious common misdiagnosis is pulmonary embolism, which be, which be more likely in patients with acute onset of dyspnea, minimal sputum production, non accompanying, accompanying upper respiratory infection or systemic symptoms, and risk factors for thromboembolism. Thus, testing for pulmonary embolism should be considered in patients with such symptoms and risk factors. Quantitative cultures of bronchoscopic or structural speci specimens, if they are uh, specimens, if they are obtained before antibiotic administration, can help distinguish between bacterial colonization, that is, presence of microorganisms at levels that provoke neither symptoms nor an immune response and infection. However, bronchoscopy is usually done only in patients receiving mechanical ventilation or for those with other risk factors for unusual microorganisms or complicated pneumonia, for example, immunocompromised failure or empiric therapy. Distinguishing between bacterial and viral pneumonia, pneumonias is challenging. Many studies have investigated the utility of clinical imaging and routine blood tests, but no test is reliable enough to make this differentiation. Even in identification of a virus doesn't preclude concomitant infection with a bacterial. Therefore, antibiotics are indicated in almost all patients with community-acquired pneumonia. In outpatients with mild pneumonia, no further diagnostic testing is needed. In patients with moderate or severe pneumonia, a wide blood cell count and measurements of electrolytes, blood uh, urea, nitrogen, and creatinine, creatinine are useful to classify risk and hydrat hydration status. Pulse oximetry or uh, arterial blood gas testing should also be done to assess oxygenation for patients with moderate or severe pneumonia who require hospitalization. Two sets of blood cultures are, ob are obtained to assess for bacteremia and sepsis, bacteremia and sepsis, bacteremia. The Infection Disease Society of America provides a guide to recommended testing based on patients' demographic and risk factors. That's, that's, 
if you want to see this infection disease society of american clinical guidelines up to you pathogen identification diagnosis of etiology can be difficult a thorough history of exposures travel pets hobbies and other exposures is essential to raise suspicion of less common organisms Identification of the pathogen can be useful to direct therapy and verify bacterial susceptibilities to antibiotics. However, because of the limitations of current diagnosis tests and the success of empiric antibiotic treatment, experts recommend limiting attempts at microbiologic identification, for example, culture-specific antigen testing, unless patients are at high risk of health or have complications, for example, severe pneumonia, income, immunocompromise, asplenia, failure to respond to empiric therapy. In general, the milder the pneumonia, the less such diagnostic testing is required. Critically ill patients require the most intensive testing, as, to, as do patients in whom an antibiotic resistant or unusual organism is suspected, for example, mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, Girovecchi and patients whose condition is de deteriorating or who are not responding to the treatment within 72 hours. Chest X-ray findings generally cannot distinguish one type of infection from another, although the following findings are suggestive. Multilobular in infiltrate suggests streptococcus pneumonia or legionella pneumonia infection. Interstitial pneumonia or chest X-ray appearing as increased interstitial making uh, markings and subplural reticular opacities that increase from the apex to the basis of the lungs suggest viral or mycoplasmal etiology. Cavitating pneumonia suggests Streptococcus aureus or a fungal or mycobacterial etiology. Blood cultures, which are often obtained in patients hospitalized from pneumonia, can identify causative bacterial pathogens if bacteremia is present. About 20, uh, 12 twelve percent of all patients hospitalized, hospitalized with pneumonia have bacteremia. Streptococcus pneumonia accounts for two thirds of these cases. Sputum testing can include gram strain and culture for identification of the pathogen. But the value of this test is uncertain because specimens often are con contaminated with oral flora and overall diagnostic yield is low. Regardless identification of a uh, bacterial pathogen, sputum cultures allows for susceptibility testing. Obtaining sputum samples also allows for testing for viral pathogens via direct fluorescence antibody testing or polymerase chain reaction but cause needs to be exercised in interpretation because 15% of healthy adults carry a respiratory virus or potential bacterial pathogen. More than 15%, not just 15%, more. In patients whom condition is deteriorating and of, in those are unresponsive to broad spectrum antibiotics, sputum should be tested with mycobacterial and fungal stains and cultures. Sputum samples can be obtained non-invasively by simple expectoration or after hypertronic saline nebulization induced sputum for patients unable to produce sputum. Alternatively, patients can undergo bronchoscopy or endotracheal suctioning, either of which can be easily done through the endotracheal tube in mechanically ventilated patients. Otherwise, bronchoscopic sampling is usually done only for patients with other risk factors, for example, immunocompromised, failure, or empiric therapy. Urine testing for legionella antigen and pneumococcal, pneumococcal antigen is now widely available. These tests are simple and rapid have higher sensitivity and specificity than sputum, grains, uh, sputum, gram strain and culture from these pathogens. Pathogens at risk of legionella pneumonia, for example, severe illness, feral, failure of outpatient antibiotic treatment, presence of pleural effusion, active alcohol abuse, recent travel, should undergo testing for urinary legionella antigen, which remains present long after treatment is initiated by the test 
detects only Legionella pneumophilia, serogroup 1, 70% of cases. The pneumococcal antigen test is recommended for patients who are severely ill, have had unsuccessful outpatient antibiotic treatment, or who have pleural effusion, active alcohol abuse, severe liver disease, or asplenia. The, this test is especially useful in adequate sputum samples or blood cultures were not obtain, obtained before initiation of antibiotic therapy. A positive test can be used to tailor antibiotic therapy, though it does not provide antimicrobial susceptibility. So about prognosis for community-acquired pneumonia. So Short-term mortality is related to severity of illness. Mortality is less than 1% in patients who are candidates for outpatient treatment. Mortality in hospitalized patients is 8%. Death may be caused by pneumonia itself, progression to sepsis syndrome, or exacerbation of coexisting conditions. In patients hospitalized for pneumonia, risk of death is increased during the year after hospital discharge. Mortality varies to some extent by, to some extent by pathogen. Mortality rates are highest with gram-negative bacteria and methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Community quiet, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. However, because these pathogens are relatively infrequent causes of community quiet pneumonia, Staphylococcus pneumonia remains the most common cause of death in patients with community quiet pneumonia. A typical pathogen such as mycoplasma have a good prognosis. Mortality is higher in patients who do not respond to initial empiric antibiotics and in those whose treatment regimen doesn't confirm with guidelines. Okay, about treatment, treatment of community-acquired regimen. So, first of all, risk, stratif risk stratification for determination of site of care, antibiotics, antivirals for influenza or varicella, Supportive measures. So, what is risk stratification? Risk stratification via, uh, via risk pr uh, prediction rules may be used to estimate mortality risk and thus help guide decisions regarding hospitalization. These rules have been used to identify patients who can be safely treated as outpatients and those who require hospitalization because of high risk of complications. However, these rules should, supp uh, should supplement, not replace clinical judgment because many unrespected fa unre represented factors such as likelihood of adherence, adherence, ability to care for itself, ability to maintain oral intake should also influence triage, triage, decisions, triage decisions. Intensive care unit admission is required for patients who need me mechanical ventilation have hypertension, systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm hydrargyl that is irresponsive to volume resuscitation. Other criteria, especially if more than three are present, that should lead to con consideration for intensive cure admission include hypertension, required fluid support, respiratory rate more than 30 per minute, uh, partial pressure of, of oxygen, fraction of inspired oxygen less than 250, multilobar pneumonia, confusion, blood urea nitrogen more than 19.6 mg deciliter or more than 7 millimoliter, leukocyte count less than 4,000 cells microliter, platelet count less than 100,000 microliter, and temperature less than 36 degree Celsius. The pneumonia severity index is the most studied or validated prediction rule. However, because the PCI pneumonia severity index is complex and PCI PSI sorry pre pneumonia severity index because the PSI complex is requ uh, and requires severity laboratory assessments simple rules such as CURP 65 are usually recommended for clinical use use th uh, of these prediction rules uh, has led to a prediction of a necessary hospitalization for patients who have milder illness. In CURB 65, one point is uh, allotted for each of the following risk factors. Confusion, uremia, respiratory rate, systolic blood pressure. So, uh, uremia, yeah, bune is uh, more than 90 mg on deciliter. Respiratory rate, 
more than 30 beats per minute, systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm hydrargium or diastolic pressure less than 60 mm hydrargium, age more than 65 years old. Scores can be used as follows, 0 to 1 points, risk of death is less than 3%, outpatient therapy is usually appropriate. 2 points, risk of death is around 9%, hospitalization, hospitalization should be considered. More than 3 points, risk of death is 15 to 40%, hospitalization is indicated, and particularly with 4 to 5 points, ICU, intensive care admission, should be considered. Antimicrobials, antibiotic therapy is the mainstay of treatment of core community acquired pneumonia. Appropriate treatment involves starting empiric antibiotics as soon as possible, preferably less than four hours after presentation. Because pathogen identification is difficult and takes time, the empiric antibiotic regimen is selected based on likely pathogens and severity of illness. Consciousness guidelines have been developed by many professional organizations. One widely used set is dilated in one of the tables. Well, but okay, note about tables, not a time. Huh? Community quiet pneumonia and adults. Yeah. Guidelines should be adapted to local susceptibility patients, drug formularies, and individual patient circumstances. If a pathogen is subsequently identified, the results of antibiotic susceptibility testing can help guide any changes if ant in antibiotic therapy. For children, treatment depends on age, previous vaccinations, and whether treatment is outpatient, and whether treatment is uh, whether treatment is outpatient or inpatient. For children, treatment is as outpatient. Treatments are this this dictated by age. Less than five years old, amoxicillin or amoxicillin clavulanate is usually the drug of choice. If epidemiology suggests an atypical pathogen as the cause of and clinical findings are compatible, a macrolide, for example, azithromycin, classic clarithromycin, can be used instead. Some experts suggest not using antibiotics if clinical findingly features strongly suggests viral pneumonia. One of them is me. Never use in this. Uh, never start with antibiotics. If, you, if you, you think about viral pneumonia. I'm more than five years old, amoxicillin or particularly in if antipical pathogen can be excluded, amoxicillin plus a macrolide. Amoxicillin clavulanate as an alternative in the cause <coughs> appears to be an atypical pathogen, a macrolide alone can be used. For children, treat, for children treated in uh, as treated as inpatients, antibiotic therapy tends to be more broad spectrum and depends on the child's previous vaccinations. Full immunize, immunize, immunizide against streptococcus pneumonia and, influ, and Haemophilus influenza type, ampicillin or penicillin. Uh, alternatives are are ceftriaxone or cef, or. Uh, Cefotaxim, cefotaxime. And if MRCA, what is MRCA? You remember? If not, yeah, MRCA, please. Gram negative, right? Community acquired methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRCA. Haha, <laughs> so. If MRCA is suspected, vancomycin or clindamycin is, is added. If a typical pathogen cannot be excluded, a macrolide is added. Not fully, not, not fully immunized, ceftriaxone or ceftotaxime alternative is, is levofloxacin. If MRCA is suspected, vancomycin or clindamycin is added. If an atypical pathogen cannot be excluded, a macrolide is added. With empiric treatment, 90% of patients with bacterial pneumonia improve. If improvement is manifested by decreased cough and dyspnea, differentness, uh, relief of chest pain, and decline. Yeah, and decline in white blood cell counts. Failure to improve should trigger suspicion of unusual organism, resistance of the antimicrobial used for treatment, MPM co-infection or superinfection with a two with with the second sorry second infectious agent an obstructive endobronchial lesion immunosuppression 
metastatic focus or infection of infection which residing with residing if the case of pneumococcal infection non adherence to treatment in the case of outpatients wrong diagnosis that is a non infectious cause of the illness such as acute hypersensitivity pneumonitis pneumonitis when usual therapy has finished has failed sorry when usual therapy is has failed consultation with a pulmonary and or infectious disease specialist is indicated antiviral therapy may be indicated for select viral pneumonias ribavirin is not used routinely for respiratory syncytial virus pneumonia in children or adults but may be used occasionally in high risk children aged less than 24 months for influenza Oseltamivir 75 mg orally twice a day or Zanamivir 10 mg inhaled twice a day started within 48 hours of symptom onset and given for 5 days reduced the duration and severity of symptoms in patients who develop influenza infection alternatively Baloxavir started within 48 hours of symptoms onset can be given in a single dose of 40 mg for patients 40 to 80 kg 80 mg is used for patients more than 80 kg 80 80 kg in patients hospitalized with confirmed influenza infection observational studies suggest benefit even 48 hours after symptoms onset aciclovir 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 5 to 10 mg kilogram intravenous every 8 hours for adults 250 to 500 mg um, mass square body surface and area even intravenous every 8 hours for children is recommended for varicella lung infections Though pure viral pneumonia does occur, sub superimposed bacterial infections are common and require antibiotics directed against Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, and Staphylococcus aureus. Follow-up X-rays are generally not recommended in patients whose pneumonia resolves clinically as expected. Resolution of radiographic abnormalities can lag behind clinical resolution by several weeks. Chest X-ray should be considered in patients with pneumonia symptoms that do not resolve or that worsen over time. Well, uh, uh, supportive care. Supportive care includes fluids, antipyretics, analgesics, and for patients with hypoxemia, oxygen. They are very, very, very good things. Huh? Uh, and fluids, antipyretics, analgesics. Prophylaxis against thromboembolic disease can early mobilization. and early mobilization improve outcomes for patients hospitalized with pneumonia cessation counseling should also be done for smokers smokers of course I stop smoking so healthcare pneumonia the category of healthcare associated pneumonia was removed as a separate category of pneumonia in 2016 2016 infectious disease society of american guidelines for hospital acquired pneumonia Healthcare associated pneumonia includes community based patients who have had recent contact with the healthcare system such as those who reside <coughs> reside in nursing homes or other long term care facilities or visit dialysis 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 <coughs> dialysis uh, centers and infusion centers dialysis. dialysis centers dialysis and infusion centers The category was created to help identify patients at increased risk for antibiotic resistant bacteria. However, 2016 so DCA guidelines, EDCA guidelines found increasing evidence that many patients with healthcare associated pneumonia were not infected with antibiotic resistant bacteria. Rather, the risk for antibiotic resistant bacteria in these patients can be based on validated risk factors described for patients with community acquired pneumonia. Okay, some words about prevention. Prevention of community acquired pneumonia. Some forms of community acquired pneumonia are preventable with vaccination. 
Two pneumococcal vaccines are available. Pneumococcal conjugal vaccine, PCVI-13, is recommended for children aged 2 months to 2 years for adults more than 19 years with certain comorbid, including in compromising conditions, and for adults more than 65 years old, based on shared decision-making between clinician and patient. Pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, PPCF23, is given to all adults more than 65 years and to any patients more than 2 years old who have risk factors for pneumococcal infections, including but not limited to those with underlying heart, lung or immune system disorders, and those with smoke. The full list, the full list, so the full list of indications for both pneumococcal vaccinations can found on the CDC website. <laughs> CDC recommendations for other vaccines such as Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine for patients less than two years old, varicella vaccine for patients less than 18 months, and the latter booster vaccine, uh, vaccine, and and influ influenza vaccine annually for everyone more than. Six months and especially six months old, and especially for those at high risk of developing serious full related complications, can also be found in CDC website. Very interesting website. Uh -huh. This high risk group includes people more than 65 years old and people of any age with certain, certain chronic medical conditions such as diabetes, asthma, or heart disease, pregnant women, and young children. In high-risk patients who are not vaccinated against influenza and household contacts of patients with influenza, Ozeltamivir 75 mg orally once a day or Zanamivir 10 mg uh, uh, orally uh, 10 mg 10 orally mg once a day. Well, yeah, 10 mg orally once a day can be given for two weeks. If started within 48 hours of exposure, these antivirals may prevent influenza, although resistance has been described for Olzeltamivir. Smoking cessation can reduce the risk of developing pneumonia. Yes. Okay, key points. Key points. Community-acquired pneumonia is a leading cause of death in the United States and around the world. Common symptoms are and signs include cough, fever, chills, fatigue, dyspnea, rigors, sputum production, and pleurotic chest pain. Pleurotic chest pain. Uh, treat patients with mild or moderate risk pneumonia with empiric antibiotics without testing designed to identify the underlying pathogen. Hospitalize patients with multiple risk factors as deline delineated by risk assessment tools. Consider an alternative diagnosis including pulmonary embolism, particularly if pneumonia like signs and symptoms are not typical. So, my friends, this is that's enough concerning community acquired pneumonia. Thanks for your attention. Please don't forget to make your donations to our channel. <coughs> Thanks in advance. Follow and subscribe and put the ring on to be in touch <coughs> with all news from Dr. Y channel. And God bless you. Goodbye.